Watch out for the timber rattlesnakes. Uh, joking, not joking. So I developed this snake trap back in 2010. I used to just pull political yard signs out of people's homes and out of their yards, and I would cut them up, turn them into snake trap. But it, it had whoever was running for mayor on it, you know? We use a product from Wildlife Control Supplies that's called Strike'em. Strike'em smells like rodent, and so it attracts the snakes into the snake trap. We also get most of our supplies from Wildlife Control Supplies. There's a link down in the description. You can use Strike'em if you wanna lure snakes into your yard. Like if you wanted snakes in your yard but you didn't want rodents, use this, you can lure them into your yard and they'll eat all the rodents. So at Wildlife Command Center, we provide a full snake service. And what that entails is we will come out and do search and capture. We will search for the snake and capture the snakes for 60 minutes. And then we will put down seven specially designed snake traps. We leave them and trap for snakes for seven days. And then we'll come back and we'll put down a snake repellent. We'll do another search and we'll leave two of the snake traps there outside the repellent zone. Now, if you guys like snakes and snake related stuff, just leave me a comment down below and we will create more snake content. Uh, certainly we have plenty of venomous snakes in Missouri, but we also do venomous snakes in Texas and Arkansas, New Mexico, Nevada, and California. This used to be a big farm area. I don't know if you're familiar with this mm -hmm. area. Ooh, and these bugs, we have horrible bugs over here. We used to have really, really bad spiders. Okay. So. Well, well, here's a bonus. The repellent works better on insects than it does on snakes. Good. It does. Really <laughs> so, good. so what you'll notice is the creepy crawly stuff mm -hmm. will be staying away. Good. You'll, you'll have some of the buzzy stuff, the flying mm -hmm. buzzy stuff. Yeah, those will fly over mm -hmm. it. But mm -hmm. the creepy crawly stuff on the ground, like mm -hmm. like scorpions and spiders and centipedes, they hate this. Over. They we hate this stuff. Mm -hmm. We do. We do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got three different species of scorpion. Originally, when we came out here, she had saw a black rat snake in her garage, and it was curled up on the springs of the garage door. And after searching ground level, we finally looked up and we saw it right there. And so we were able to catch, capture the black rat snake. It was in the springtime and we were concerned that there was another because they were in the breeding cycle. So we put out the snake traps just to make sure. And this particular customer wanted these snake traps for a while. So these snake traps have been here a long time. And this is what they look like after 60 days or so. But that is a whole lot of bugs and creatures. So we got black crickets, we got mole crickets, also known as cave crickets. We got gray crickets, red wasps, daddy long legs, and an assortment of other little beetles. In this particular glue board, we use it for snakes because we can spray like an aerosol vegetable spray. We like to use canola oil and it releases the snake and that way, um, you know, it's a non-poisonous glue board. You can get glue boards that have toxins in them, and you can also get glue boards that have uh, anesthesia in them. And we always leave them two good snake traps so that in the future, if they see another snake somewhere, they can react immediately and they don't have to wait for us to show up. They'll usually put these traps somewhere on a shelf and just kind of keep them on standby and then they'll put them down whenever they, if they see a snake. So we're going to take our snake repellent and we're going to create a repellent border around this house. So this repellent is pretty good. Uh, typically it'll last about 60 days. Right now uh, we're in September and so this is gonna last well past the, uh, it starts getting cold and the snakes go to ground. And in the winter time, you only have 
uh, ring neck snakes to worry about and they're a subterranean snake that gets down into um, the basements a lot so so it's not about quantity with this stuff it's really about even disbursement because this stuff is detectable by the snake about six to eight feet out if a snake comes in right there you've got all of this barrier that it's going to detect and so it messes with their Jacob's organ where they can't tell where they are in space and time. And so they may come up to this and they go, oh, I'm disoriented. And so they back up and they go, oh, I can tell where I am now. I'm going to get a signature from the customer. And we'll see if the office has anything good for us to go do now. Okay, I'm all done. Okay. There's a, there's <laughs> the odor. It, yeah, it'll dissipate, it. okay. you know. But that's what's that's how you know your snake repellent's down you know, and working. Snake, I wouldn't want to be near it either. Yeah. <laughs> so right now I just shook it all up all over the place so it's mm -hmm. up in the air, but it dissipates along ground level and you won't be able to smell it after a day or so. Okay, okay. All right. All right. I'm all good to go. All right, thank you. You have a good day. The black rat snake is the most common snake we run across. Not necessarily problematic, however, does scare a lot of people. Black rat snakes are around people's residences because they have bats, rats, baby birds, or mice, which are problems within themselves. So we've got a couple of black rat snakes that we have given uh, ivermectin to. We've killed all the parasites. We've made sure that the scale damage is have repaired. They've shed out once or twice. We fed them, and now it's time to release them. We have a spot that's not too far away from here that we have written permission from uh, the landowner to release snakes. And so that's where we're gonna go. But first, let's grab a couple of snakes. The older they get, the blacker they get and they lose their pattern. And then they'll have this checkered pattern on the bottom. And that is classic of most colubrids. And this snake classification is a colubrid. And if we compare this snake to the other snake, we'll see that this snake is a little bit bigger and it still has a lot of pattern to it. You look at the bottom, the checkers are a little bit different. Yeah, is this the snake that's commonly confused for the cottonmouth? Well, don't so, similar underbellies? so a, co a cottonmouth, certainly has a similar pattern to this in a very vague way to a snake person like myself there's nothing like them heads completely different mm -hmm. patterns completely different body shape is completely different but to the untrained eye uh, they're both dark snakes and so people do say oh it's a dark snake it must be a cottonmouth however we don't have cottonmouths here in st louis missouri like that's more of a southern snake. We don't, I've never come across a cottonmouth in St. Louis, Missouri. These snakes here, harmless, actually quite beneficial to the bigger scheme of things. And if you have these snakes around your home, you're lucky because you have less bats, rats, and baby birds because they eat the heck out of them. Watch out for the timber rattlesnakes. Uh, joking, not joking. This place is chocked full of meadow voles and chipmunks. Black rat snakes love to eat both. I just love turning black rat snakes loose because I love this part right here. And for the Wildlife Command Center full snake service, this is the ultimate full circle. The black rat snakes love this environment I just like seeing them, you know. As a matter of fact, I need to take a picture because it's pretty cool. Ooh, not in the mood. He's feisty. Ooh, rattling the tail. Yeah, that's when, like, he's, we've been treating him for two weeks, but he's already wild again. 
Yeah, so that's just a, maybe like a mechanism. That it's a do. defensive mechanism, the okay. rattling the tail. Yeah. Because exactly. everybody's afraid of rattlesnakes. Yeah, just kind of pretend to be a rattlesnake. Right. Go figure, you're bleeding. It's because he bit me. There you go. Look way bigger out here in the wild than they did at the office, huh? They do look bigger. These seed pods are even more sticky because it's later in the year. Once they turn brown, it's like they almost will not come off. And so we use these horse brushes to knock them off because they got these little rubber tabs on them. And that's pretty effective. But I have to do it because my wife does not like these in the washing machine. And she will fuss at me.